This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. It didn't just change Apple, it changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't just it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> no. Actually, here it is, but we're going to leave it there for now. If you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis, phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart, and they're you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. Because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. We've been very lucky to have brought a few revolutionary user interfaces to the market in our time. First was the mouse. The second was the click wheel. And now we're going to bring multi-touch to the market. And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product. The Mac, the iPod, and now the iPhone. Now software on mobile phones is like it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're going to show you a software breakthrough. Software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. It's got multitasking. It's got the best networking. It already knows how to power manage. We've been doing this on mobile computers for years. It's got awesome security. And to write apps, it's got everything from Coco and the graphics, and it's got core animation built in, and it's got the audio and video that OS X is famous for. It's got all the stuff we want, and it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking, not the crippled stuff 
that you find on most phones. This is real desktop class applications. The second thing we're doing is we're learning from the iPod, syncing with iTunes. You know, we're going to ship our 100 millionth iPod this year, and that's a, tens of millions of people that know how to sync these devices with their PCs or Mac and sync all of their media right onto their iPod. And iTunes is going to sync all your media onto your iPhone, your music, your audiobooks, podcasts, movies, TV shows, music videos, but it also syncs a ton of data. Your contacts, your calendars, and your photos, which you can get on your iPod today, your notes, your, your bookmarks from your web browser, your email accounts, your whole email setup, all that stuff can be moved over to iPhone completely automatically. It's really nice. And we do it, we do it through iTunes. Again, you go to iTunes and you set it up, just like you'd set up an iPod or an Apple TV. So let's go ahead and turn it on. This is the size of it. It fits beautifully in the palm of your hand. So an iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. Let's start with the iPod. I'm in the iPod. I want to get home. I push the home button right here, and I'm home. Back in the iPod, I'm back in the iPod. Now here I am, you can see five buttons across the bottom, playlists, artists, songs, videos, and more. I'm an artist right now. Well, how do I scroll through my list of artists? How do I do this? I just take my finger and I scroll. And if I want to pick somebody, let's say I want to pick the Beatles, I just tap them. And here's the Beatles songs with their albums right here. I want to play Sgt. Peppers, I just hit Sgt. Peppers right there. And uh, you know, a little help for my friends. Look at this gorgeous album artwork here. Now, let's take a look at a revolutionary phone. We want to reinvent the phone. Now, what's the killer app? The killer app is making calls. It's amazing. It's amazing how hard it is to make calls on most phones. Most people actually dial them every time. So we want to let you use contacts like never before. You can sync your iPhone with your PC or Mac and bring down all your contacts right into your phone. So you've got everybody's numbers with you at all times. And so this is what it looks like when you get a call. This is what it sounds like. It's one of our ringtones you can pick, of course. You see that uh, icon in the lower left-hand corner of the phone? I just push it right here, and boom, I'm in the phone. And I've got five buttons across the bottom. Favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, and voicemail. I'm in contacts right now. Again, how do I move around my contacts? I just scroll through them. And so let's say I want to make a call to Johnny Ive. I can just push here, and I see Johnny Ive's contacts with all his information, his three phone numbers, his email, whatever else, his address, whatever else I've got. It's all in one place. And if I want to call Johnny, all I do is push his phone number. I'll call his mobile number right now. And now we are calling Johnny here. <coughs> I could turn on a speakerphone like this if I wanted to. Hello, Steve. Hey, Johnny, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Well, it's been two and a half years, and I, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to make the first public phone call with iPhone. <laughs> now, let's take a look at an internet communications device. It's part of iPhone. So let's go into mail. Second icon from the left on the bottom there. I just touch it with my finger, and boom, I'm there. And so I've got an inbox here. And this is, by the way, running live on Yahoo IMAP email. This stuff is coming off a Yahoo server somewhere up in the cloud. And uh, so I can say, James Vincent here sent me an email. Yeah, he's a proud father. And there we go. And I can just scroll it here. I've got inline photos, rich text email. All right, now I want to show you something incredible. <laughs> I want to show you Safari running on a mobile device. So let's go to the web. And here we are. I'm going to load in, uh, rather than apple.com here, a, a little uh, more universal site. I'm going to load in the New York Times. It's kind of a slow site because it's got a lot of images. But here we are loading it. We're loading it over Wi-Fi right now. And rather than just give you a WAP version of the New York Times 
rather than give you this wrapped version all around, we're showing you the whole New York Times website. And there it is. And guess what I can do? I can just put this into landscape mode, and there it is right there. You know, if you've ever used what's called a web browser on a mobile phone, you'll know how incredible this is. I hope you never really know, <laughs> because it's, it's bad out there today. And this is a revolution of the first order. Now, you can't, you can't really think about the internet, of course, without thinking about Google, right? And for Google, what we have on our phone, working with them, is, of course, Google Search. We have that built right into the browser. Just type what you want, hit Google, and you're off. And Google Maps. We've been working very closely with them to make this all happen. We're thrilled with the results. And it's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Eric Schmidt, Google's CEO. Congratulations, Steve. What an incredible job. What I like about this new device and the new architecture of the internet is that you can actually merge without merging. Internet architectures allow you now to take the enormous brain trust that is represented by the Apple development team and combine that with the open protocols and data services that companies like Google and the others represented that are coming up in, in a bit to actually put them together in a seamless environment for end users. What I particularly like about this is it's the first time it's all to come together in one place. Now, you also can't think about the internet without thinking about Yahoo. And again, on the phone, we've got Yahoo Search built right in. You can select which one you want to use. Just type in something, hit that Yahoo button, and boom, you're off. And of course, we also have Yahoo IMAP email services. And so it is my great pleasure to introduce Jerry Yang, co-founder and chief Yahoo. Jerry. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I'm not a board member of Apple, but I would love to have one of these, too, obviously. <laughs> wow, all this for a phone, pretty in incredible. And, and, and what a great device, Steve. We are uh, really proud at Yahoo to be partnering with Apple on not only the Yahoo IMAP email, the first one we're doing, um, but also uh, hopefully on a whole variety of other popular services from Yahoo. It's been great having the two greatest companies on the web right down the block. Google and Yahoo. And we've been able to work with these guys really closely, and it's been an incredible pleasure to work on this great technology and bring it to everybody in iPhone. So thank you guys so much. You've really helped us put the internet in your pocket. So an internet communicator, an iPod, and a phone. Let's put them all together and see what you can do in a real life scenario. I want to listen to some music, so I'm going to go into my iPod here. And uh, let's see, uh, in artists, I want to listen to, uh, oh, maybe Red Hot Chili Peppers. I love those guys. And so I'm listening to a song of theirs. <laughs> And let's see what happens when I get a phone call. Music fades out. Screen changes. I got a phone call coming in. So I can ignore it, but I think I'm going to answer it. So I'll answer it. Howdy. Hi, Phil. Now, it knows who Phil is, because he's in my address book, so it puts his little picture up here and everything up there. And uh, hi, Phil. Listen, I'm kind of uh, busy right now. What can I do for you? Yeah, I was kind of hoping that you're done soon that we could not only get some dinner, but maybe catch a movie tonight. Is there anything you want to see? Um, let me go check it out. I've got, uh, I think I've got Fandango on my uh, bookmarks here. Okay, here's Fandango. Let's just double tap, and here's the movies playing. Yep. How about we go see uh, Night at the Museum? I haven't seen that yet. Oh, I haven't either. That'd be great. Great. All righty. Hey, take care, Phil. Now, what I'm going to do later. is to go back to my uh, call. I just touched the top here. And I'm back at my call, and I'm just going to go ahead and end the call. And uh, what happens now? Back in my music. So iPhone is like having your life in your pocket. It's the ultimate digital device. So what should we price it at? 
Well, what do these things normally cost? An iPod, the most popular iPod, $199 for 4 gig nano. What's a smartphone cost? Well, they, they say you get the phone and some of the internet with it, although that's questionable. But they cost somewhere between around $299. You can get them for $199. Palm just introduced a new one at $399 yesterday. So generally average about $299 with a two-year contract. Now, these phones sort of do music, but nobody uses them for music because they're not very good. And so they end up buying an iPod to go with the phone. We know we sell the iPod. And so people spend $499 on this combination. What should we charge for iPhone? Because iPhone's got a lot more than this stuff, right? It's got video, real video. It's got this beautiful, gorgeous widescreen. It's got multi-touch user interface. It's got Wi-Fi. It's got a real browser. It's got HTML email. It's got cover flow and on and on and on. And this stuff would normally cost hundreds of dollars. So how much more than $499 should we price iPhone? Well, we thought long and hard about it. Because iPhone just does so much stuff. So much better experience on a call and managing your contacts and visual voicemail, random access voicemail for the first time, and texting, and email, and real browser, and Google Maps, and <laughs> tremendous iPod, and cover flow, and video. And <laughs> what should we price this thing at? Well, for four gigabyte model, we're going to price it at that same $499. No premium whatsoever. <laughs> $499. And we're going to have an 8 gigabyte model for just $599. So we're going to price it starting at $499. Now, when's it going to be available? We're going to be shipping these in June. Yeah, June. And when we do, our partner is going to be Singular. We've chosen Singular. They are. They are the best and most popular network in the country. And it's my pleasure to introduce the CEO of Singular, Stan Signal. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. Welcome, that is super. Stan. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Steve and I first met uh, about two years ago in New York City when he shared with me this vision that he had for this product. And we've been working on it for some time and actually entered into a contractual agreement without us ever seeing the device or the phone. And that was because of the confidence that I have in Steve and his leadership team to deliver on the vision that they have. And every time I see this, it's just wow. It's just wow. It's really, really cool. You've exceeded my expectations. You know, 11 days ago, AT&T became a full part, I mean, Singular became a full part of the new AT&T family. And this new family will help fulfill the vision we have of wireline, wireless, broadband, and video coming together on one device in the ways that customers haven't imagined. 1% market share equals 10 million units. This is a giant market. If you just 1% market share, you're going to sell 10 million phones. And this is exactly what we're going to try to do in 2008, our first full year in the market, is grab 1% market share and go from there. So we're going to enter a very competitive market, a lot of players. We think we're going to have the best product in the world. And we're going to go for it and see if we can get 1% market share, 10 million units in 2008, and go from there. So today, we've added Apple TV and now iPhone. And you know, the Mac is the only one that you really think of as a computer, right? And so we thought about this, and we thought, you know, maybe our name should reflect this a little bit more than it does. So we're announcing today we're dropping the computer from our name. And from this day forward, we're going to be known as Apple Incorporated to reflect the product mix that we have today. <laughs> We've been so lucky at Apple. We've had some real revolutionary products. The Mac in 1984 is an experience that those of us that were there will never forget. And I don't think the world will forget it either. 
The iPod in 2001 changed everything about music. And we're going to do it again with the iPhone in 2007. We're very excited about this. And you know, there's an old Wayne Gretzky quote that I love. I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. And we've always tried to do that at Apple since the very, very beginning. And we always will. So thank you very, very much for being a part of this.